Hi, Louie here from Groundstone. Today we're going to be on a um, project here where we're going to be replacing an aged septic system. The current sec septic system is approximately 30 plus years old. It's uh, reached the end of its life cycle and things are starting to back up into the home. We did some various testing and we found out that the soils are pretty much all clogged up. Things are starting to uh, back up into the septic tank from the field. So today we're going to be replacing this entire septic system. The old septic tank is undersized for the current standards. So we're going to be exposing the tank, which we've already started. We're going to be decommissioning it and then we're going to be installing a brand new septic tank. We're also going to be replacing our field area, of course, because it's uh, clogged soils. So this uh, new field area has to be a pressure distribution system. A conventional gravity system just is not going to fit into this uh, tight space. So join me and uh, we're going to go through the steps. Well, we've exposed the old septic tank and we're just going to be suctioning out the old tank. And we're going to decommission this one. We've located the inlet coming up from the house. Just making some progress here on backfilling the septic tank. Uh, we normally decommission things, we just throw sand in there, make sure there's no void space. So then now uh, we've uh, filled the septic tank up with sand, and go ahead and backfill that particular area, reconnect to the established drain line coming in, place in a separate septic tank next to it, and then we can commence our new septic system. So we finish excavating and uh, placing the septic tank, 1250 gallon, sand bedded. And now we're basically just going to reconnect from the home to the new septic tank. Here's our old septic tank that's been decommissioned. We severed the line. And now we're just gonna tie into the new septic tank. So now we've connected the home to the new septic tank. Sever ties with the old septic tank. Now we're ready for the next component of the septic system, which will be our pump chamber. And that's what's going to drive all the effluent out into the drain field. So moving along now, we've just excavated for our pump chamber. This is our pump chamber here, and it's connecting to our larger 1250 gallon septic tank, which is connected to a new line from the home. I'm just going to backfill and carry on. The next uh, thing we did was install the risers so that we can get access to the septic tank from grade level. And just carry on backfilling up to grade. So now we have our grade level for our tankage. And we're just going to start um, excavating our seepage bed area. We've already started to extract that. So we're on our third day of our installation. Uh, we've already got the septic tank and pump chamber in place. Now we've just finished excavating our seepage bed area. So we've got a long and narrow seepage bed and sandy soils. So our next order of business is gonna, is gonna be having a, um, a stone slinger uh, truck to uh, throw some uh, drain rock over into our area just because this is a bit of a challenging site here. Not a lot of room for any vehicles to come up and down this area. So we're gonna have a stone slinger on site to deliver some drain rock. And uh, the next order of business after that will be installing the um, lateral drain lines from the uh, pump chamber all the way up to the field.
So now we've got our seepage bed relatively level. All the drain rock is in place. And that's a matter of positioning our laterals. That'll be our next step. What we're doing here is setting up our clean out ports. Each end of the lateral is going to receive a clean out port. So that way, part of maintenance will be to jet the laterals to free any kind of substance that's blocking the orifices. Just placing our orifice shields for even distribution. So here we have our manifold, we've added rock to the surface of the laterals. Now our laterals are covered and our next order of business is to add some fabric and then start the backfill process. So going along we've just added some fabric. This is going to pre prevent uh, infiltration from the sands getting into our drain area. Here we have our cleanouts. Here's our monitoring port at the infiltrative surface area. We're just going to carry on with the fabric, and then we're going to start our backfill. So this is going to be, this is our basically our um, long and narrow seepage bed area. This particular lot was not going to conform to a conventional gravity, so we had to do a pressure system to a seepage bed area. Now what we're going to do is just blow out our lines. I want to make sure that any debris in our piping network will be free. So this blows out any contamination, any little soil particles that are sort of stuck in our, in our laterals. Now we put on our testing caps. We're just doing a quick test, a measurement of our squirt height. Everything seems to be fairly even. So here's our finished grade. Now all we have to do is basically just seed it. We've got an electrician that's going to tie everything in to the uh, tank alert. Up here we've got our valve boxes and where our seepage bed situates. Problem with these small lots is sometimes it's tough to disperse the soil after we've excavated. But here is the final result. Thank you.